Now, as I mentioned yesterday on the energy debate, the Albanese Labor government should look to their Labor mates in the UK who are all in on nuclear, with plans to build another massive nuclear power station unveiled, also to develop small modular reactors, spending more than £14 billion. That's about $30 billion Aussie dollars. Here's UK Secretary for Energy, Ed Miliband. Golden ages? We've all had them. Nuclear power had its golden age in Britain in the 1960s, back when we used to build things as a country. This government says it's time to start investing and building again and end the years of decline. That's why we're announcing the biggest investment in nuclear in over half a century. Sizewell C, SMRs, nuclear fusion, it's all part of giving us energy security as a country, tackling the climate crisis with clean energy and creating good jobs, the length and breadth of Britain. Let's bring in Jasmine Diab from Global Nuclear Security Partners Australia. She joins me live from Perth. Good to talk to you again, Jasmine. Uh, this is uh, an incredible uh, step forward by the UK. Of course, they've had nuclear power in the UK for 70 years, but they're really ramping it up uh, with the commitment to major investments here. And they've made it very, very clear that they say the UK cannot get to net zero without a massive expansion in nuclear. That, surely that's... a uh, uh, obvious to anyone who's looking around the world. Yeah, it really is, Chris. It's exciting for the people of the UK to see a good investment in their clean energy future. And the UK has realised that to decarbonise at scale and create industry and maintain industry, you need nuclear to do that. And they've also realised that it doesn't need to be just large scale nuclear power plants. Their investment into Rolls-Royce and its SMR program is really exciting too, to see the opportunities that that will have to create an SMR supply chain across the UK. And the investment in fusion uh, is the next step for the future of fusion technology. So yeah. really exciting to see that come out of the UK. Yeah, look, this is why I want to focus on it, because it's so relevant to Australia. It cuts to the chase of what we need to confront in this country. So I want to run a couple of grabs from Ed Miliband in, par in Parliament, where he detailed various aspects of the plan. First up, here's the new large-scale nuclear plant. Sizewell C will power the equivalent of around 6 million homes with clean homegrown energy for 60 years and it will be a jobs and growth engine for Britain, supporting 10,000 jobs at peak construction and creating 1,500 apprenticeships. Well-paid, highly skilled jobs in East Anglia and communities across the country. Now, that's the old-fashioned style of the reactor, I suppose, the latest technology, but a massive reactor that creates a huge number of good, high-quality jobs and powers huge numbers of homes. That, that, that's one option and uh, uh, UK's already got some of those and they've got the Hinkley one about to come on stream. So th that is certainly one option we could adopt in this country. Yeah, definitely. It's an option we can adopt on the east coast of Australia. You could argue that the west coast of Australia and the north are smaller grids that don't need that large input. But on the east coast of Australia, we need to decarbonise at scale. And something like these Sizewell C-sized reactors, I wouldn't necessarily say the same reactor technology, but being able to produce enough energy to power 6 million homes from one site is pretty phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, we don't have the capacity to do that at the moment. No, so that's one option. And, and importantly, the UK is saying this makes economic sense. This is affordable. In fact, it's more affordable than all the other options when you look at renewables and the like. And here's Ed Miliband in the same speech to Parliament talking about small modular reactors. I can inform the House that following a rigorous two-year competition, today Rolls-Royce SMR has been selected as the preferred bidder to develop the UK's first SMRs, subject to final government approvals and contract signature. This initial project could create up to 3,000 skilled jobs and power the equivalent of around 3 million homes. And, Jasmine, this goes to the points you were making about the future here. This could be even more prospective for Australia because if they do the investment and the work and roll off these MF SMRs off an assembly line, we could essentially Im import them into Australia and plug them in as small-scale nuclear reactors that could fill our energy needs right around the country. 
Yeah, definitely. And this is where I think the future of nuclear is really exciting globally because SMRs could provide enough energy for some of our small remote towns, for some of our really large industrial mine sites. Um, the the possibilities are endless with SMRs and to see the UK put a lot of investment behind one technology type to ensure it can be regulated and licensed, we could see a Royals Royce SMR roll out across the world, build a supply chain globally and Australia can be part of that. And uh, my fear is we're missing out on the opportunities here because of ideology instead of Spot being on. open to all the options for clean energy. Spot on, Jasmine. Thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Jasmine Diab there from Global Nuclear Security Australia joining us live from Perth. That's what we need to do. Get rid of the bans and send our experts, not the politicians, the experts to the UK. Look at that, what, what they're doing. It's a Labor government over there. They're committed to net zero and they're big on nuclear. It's showing the way for Australia, no doubt.